Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel and Halloween content is in full swing this October and today I'm going to be doing my personal rankings of Jason Voorhees' hockey mask. Voorhees. Voorhees's. Ziz. Fuck it. Now a few years ago, I did my personal rankings of the overall looks of Jason back on the main channel, my Cosplay Chris channel. But today it's just about the hockey mask because I have shifted a few of my rankings around over the years and I just want to actually focus on the aesthetic of the hockey mask because much like Freddy Krueger's glove, Ghostface's mask, Jason's hockey mask is iconic. It's up there with the Mickey Mouse ears and the Superman emblem. So in total, I have 10 rankings. There are two that are paired together. But before I get to the main bulk of the hockey mask, I want to give a honorable mention and shout out to the Jason Hockey Mask, the Ghost Jason Hockey Mask from Vince DeSanti's Never Hike Alone and Never Hike in the Snow. It's a really sweet looking hockey mask. It's simple in its design and its execution, but I love the weathering, the scratches and stuff like that. It's just a really cool hockey mask and a nice take and a more modern take on Jason's hockey mask. All right, like I said, we've got 10 rankings. So that being said, number 10. Now, as a whole, there really isn't a bad apple in the bunch of these hockey masks in terms of the main timeline Jason Voorhees hockey masks. We're going from obviously Friday the 13th part 3 all the way up to the 2009 Platinum Dunes remake. And coming in at number 10 is the Friday the 13th part 5 Roy hockey mask. Again, I really don't have issues with any of these masks. Some just don't appeal to me as much as the others in terms of aesthetic. And in terms of Roy's hockey mask, as we all know, this is an imposter Jason, a copycat Jason, what have you, from Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th Part 5. I dig the blue chevrons. I like the new design of it. Again, simple in terms of uh, the weathering, the, the off-white, the bone white. But the blue chevrons are a nice touch because I'm a sucker for anything blue, clearly. But apart from the blue chevrons, it doesn't really overall have anything that tickles my fancy. Coming in at number 9 is the Platinum Dunes 2009 Friday the 13th remake hockey mask. It was a big deal that this was being remade because we knew eventually we were going to get an Elm Street remake from Platinum Dunes and it was just an absolute critical and fan success. But the Jason we see in the remake is an absolute beast. He's like a doomsday prepper. He has the underground tunnels in Camp Crystal Lake. He is a towering beast played by Derek Mears who just doesn't walk in this film. He sprints. He is like fucking Usain Bolt. Jason. And in terms of the hockey mask, it's pretty good. Like, it's pretty filthy. I do like the idea of how he gets it in the film where he just sees it in that storage area in the garage when he kills that guy. And instead of having his sack, he swaps it out for a hockey mask. And overall, it's pretty cool. It, it's kind of sticking with what's familiar in terms of the aesthetic and the design, especially the placement of the chevrons. But I do like the weathering, all that. I do love how over the top, I don't know if I'll be able to find the footage. And if I do, I'll overlay it now. The behind the scenes video of when they were making the remake back in 2009, they had it in this like padded briefcase, the Hero Hockey Mask, and it was so over the top. But at the same time, I loved it. So I've thought about like putting a Freddy glove in a, in a Pelican case like that with all the padding, but I'm like, Stanley, that's a bit too much. Coming in at number eight is the part six mask from Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. This is a pretty damn good entry in the series, if I may say. I think it's got its second win and sort of renaissance a bit, much like Elm Street 2. It has that self-aware meta humor to it. And in terms of the aesthetic of Jason, I call it paintball Jason, but the hockey mask, again, much like the Roy mask, it's simple in its execution, but I just love it. I love the matted look. It's not glossed or anything. The weathering is simple, the bone white, and we just have one red chevron on top. We don't have any cheek chevrons and whatnot, and a simple, nice bit of weather leathered strapping around the back. Simple in its execution. That's all I got to say about it. Coming in at number seven is the Jason X regular Jason and Uber Jason hockey mask. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I was doubling up on one ranking. So I'm placing these two together. 
not only because they're from the same film, Jason X, but to me, it's just kind of a tie in terms of this ranking and this number ranking. Obviously, we see a regular looking Jason at the beginning of Jason X before he's then cryogenically frozen. And then we get Uber Jason with all the upgrades and stuff at the end. I don't mind the look of regular Jason at the beginning of Jason X, but I feel like it's hard to explain, but there's too much human elements going on with him and stuff like that. And I feel like that also affects the look of the hockey mask. It is interesting. They've gone for a much more sharper nose and stuff like that on the bridge of the nose of the hockey mask. And then when we get to Uber Jason, it is a chromed mask. Now, what's interesting is most times out of 10, the hero hockey mask, the hockey mask made for production throughout the Friday the 13th series were indeed vacuum formed ABS plastic. In the case of Uber Jason, it's actually fiberglass. And I'm pretty sure the hockey mask used for the regular J Jason at the beginning of Jason X was also fiberglass. Correct me if I'm wrong. It could have been a mixture of vacuum formed ABS plastic and also fiberglass. <laughs> Coming in at number six is the Freddy vs. Jason hockey mask. Now, I'm gonna be showing you my Jason hockey mask and my part seven hockey mask. So, without further ado, the Freddy vs. Jason hockey mask. Now, some of you have probably seen this before. This is cast from a production made mold from the late great Bill Tezarakis, who did the effects on Freddy vs. Jason. Not only Jason's makeup and props, but also Robert Englund's makeup, Freddy Krueger makeup, which is awesome. So, this was cast and painted by Josh Ludman, and the mold was acquired by Mr. Sean Clark. This is number 19 of 20 made. So Josh offered uh, blank gray castings or painted ones. I love when I have other artists completed work, much like these gloves you see here. I love something that isn't my work. It's one of those things where it's like when you cook your own dinner, you don't enjoy it as much, whereas someone who cooks dinner for you, you appreciate it. It just tastes better. This is how I am with props, and I wanted Josh to paint it up and he's done a beautiful job. So this is like the, the main hero mask you see in the film. It does lighten here and there in certain shots of the film, but overall this is kind of the meeting halfway look. But in terms of my favorite hockey mask look from Freddy vs. Jason, it's right at the end where it's all cracked on the side and almost looks like molten cracked rock all around here. And correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, I do believe you also offered that particular crack mask. I think you did a 3D render of it or a scan or something. Either way, Josh is your man for Freddy vs. Jason Hockey Mask, Hockey Mask in general, just overall a terrific artist. So, and that is my number six. Coming in at number five is the Jason Goes to Hell Hockey Mask. Now, this has nothing to do with my thoughts on the film. The film is a fucking Mr. Toad's wild ride. Like, Jason's only in the film like that much, and then the rest, I don't know what the hell you call it. But the Jason that we see at the beginning of Jason Goes to Hell, I really dig the design, most notably the hockey mask, because it's carrying over, for the most part, from the continuity of Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood, when we have the propeller cut, the, the, the one chevron in the middle of the forehead, and just the overall weathering. But this time around, Jason's skin has kind of bloated and started forming and molding around the hockey mask, and it looks like it's sinking in, and it just looks disgusting. But taking a look at photos of the screen-used hockey mask when it was up for auction, I really dig it. I really love the double riveting on the straps and stuff like that, and again, taking care of continuity from Friday the 13th part 7. Even though the straps had changed, the overall aesthetic is there. Coming in at number 4 is the Friday the 13th part 8 Jason Takes Manhattan, or sorry, Jason Takes a Boat from Vancouver Hockey Mask. Again, very different from its predecessors and the ones that came after it. I used to be obsessed with this hockey mask when I was in high school and painting them up. I used to buy uh, ABS vacuum form hockey mask blanks from horror suppliers on the internet and just start painting them up. So it was usually, you know, the, uh, the 4, the 7, and the 8. But what I love about the 8 is the yellowish design of it. And and the flipped up chevrons. I love the chevrons on the side where they kind of look like this is really cool. I love the adjustable strapping and all that type of stuff. I'm a sucker for like weathered leather and stuff like that. And with most of these hockey masks, it's no exception. And I love how this one kind of just stands out from the crowd. Yeah, the film isn't the greatest and it can kind of be a bit of a drag but you can always rely on Kane Hodder's Jason from Jason Takes Manhattan looking absolutely brilliant. And it's with thanks to how cool that hockey mask looks, in my opinion anyway. Coming in at number three is the Friday the 13th part three 
hockey mask. So this is the one that started it all. We obviously had Jason as a young boy in the very first Friday the 13th. We had Hillbilly Jason in Friday 2, but he had a sack on his head. This time around, he acquires his hockey mask in Friday the 13th Part 3. So this is the OG, the one that started it all. So the main inspiration for Jason's hockey mask in Part 3 was from a Fibro Sports style Detroit Red Wings goaltender mask that was owned by one of the 3D supervisors for Part 3, which is really cool. And you look at them side by side and compare the pair, like it's pretty similar, but you know, the eye holes have been uh, uh, shrunken down a little bit and stuff like that. And the overall shape of it, instead of being like an arm and it's kind of bowed out a bit more, but the inspiration is definitely there. Those things on eBay these days cost an absolute fortune. It's much like the Case XX P210 tomato knives that were used on the original part one and two Freddy glove. And there's not really much else to say about it. Like I love the red chevrons. There's no real weathering going on again because it's uh, the first time Jason is using it, but I just love it. And I'm ranking it here because it's the first of its kind and the first of a very familiar trademark with Jason. <laughs> Coming in at number two, and my one and two are always flipping. Much like when I rank the Elm Street films, part one and part three are always flipping in terms of my number one and number two. But coming in at number two is Friday the 13th, part seven, the new blood. The hockey mask in that designed by John Carl Buechler along with his makeup and he also directed the film, which is really cool. I absolutely adore. With that being said, Let's check out my part seven hockey mask. So I got this bad boy as a blank. It's supposedly derived from the hero mask, which is pretty cool. And I painted it up, added the strapping and just what I love of how gnarly it is with the propeller chop here, like at the end of part six, again, taking care of continuity. But I think also, especially when it comes to say, you know, the part seven, the part four, and you know what's coming next is my number one, but even the part eight, the makeup complements the hockey mask in those instances, in my opinion. But we are talking about the hockey mask today, and I just love the, the taking care of continuity. I do love that one lonely chevron there. I, I don't feel there's the need to add them here. It just kind of stands on its own, even though in uh, Jason Goes to Hell, they kind of take care of continuity. And even though the hockey mask looked different in part eight, they kind of skipped a beat and said, well, let's carry this over into Jason Goes to Hell, which I really dig. And again, going back to how cool Kane Hodder looks, not only in this hockey mask, but also the makeup and his spine is just showing. It's just absolutely brilliant. To me, the hockey masks are always like the icing on the Jason Voorhees cake. <laughs> and of course, coming in at number one is the Friday the 13th Part 4 hockey mask. I have always adored this hockey mask as well as this makeup design of Jason done by the brilliant Tom Savini. This is a brutal Jason makeup, especially with what happens to him at the end with that machete to the head and he's sliding down on the blade. It's just brilliant. But what I love also much like the part seven continuity to uh, the Jason Goes to Hell continuity in terms of the hockey mask design, they're taking care of continuity from part three to part four with the added ax wound and all that stuff. But we see a lot more of the chevrons being scratched off and a lot of scuffing and whatnot going on with the hockey mask. It is a beautiful looking hockey mask. And I always love seeing artists' interpretations and renditions and uh, their, their paint work when they paint up a blank. Some of them just look absolutely incredible with their blood work and layering and making the blood look dry. So overall, I think this is my definite favorite hockey mask. Like now and then it does switch back to the part seven, but for the most part, I love the part four design and obviously the part four makeup. And there you have it guys. Those are my personal rankings of Jason Voorhees hockey mask. With that said, let me know your rankings down below. Love your guts and I'll catch you in the next one.